boing, boing, boing. Boing, boing, boing. Oh, great sound effect. Action, let's go. Today we're going to learn to draw the head from front and from the side using the Loomis method, which is all over the net, but is always good to practice. So here we go. So first of all, I'm going to start with a circle. It's always good to start with a circle. Doesn't matter what angle you're going to draw. And I'm going to do a center line to divide the head in two. On the side, I'm going to cut off a little bit on the right, on the left, by making this square, kind of a square. I'm going to divide this square in two and add a third length equal to that division right here. So these three lengths should be the same height, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So now we can start drawing. On this second horizontal line, I can draw my eyebrows. Each of these lines are going to help me to place different elements of the face. Eyebrow on the left and an eyebrow on the right. In the middle, I'm going to draw this little triangle, which is important. It's the transition from the forehead to the nose. And on this third horizontal line, there's the base of the nose with a little nostril on the left and another little nostril on the right. By dividing this third length, I can find the line of the lower lip. So now I can draw a little bit above the line in the middle of the two lips. Okay. And indicate here a little bit the upper lip. A little bit of shadow here under the lower lip to make it come out. And now I can draw the eyes. So I'm going to use the width of the nose. Um, the, it's about the same as the eye that you can uh, use, which is a good uh, way to find its proportion. Knowing that in between each eye, you can place an eye. That's important to understand. And even the right and left end of the mouth can be used to find the center of the eye. Here's the center of the nose. I'm just going to indicate the bone structure. And start drawing the upper eyelid here and indicate the lower eyelid here. And maybe add another line above the upper lid to indicate the fold of the eye into the skin. More or less obvious depending on the face or the facial expression. Okay, so here I can put my iris in the middle of the eye, which is at the corner of my mouth, on the left and here on the right. I'm going to accentuate the upper eyelid line to give him a more severe, deep look. And also add a few face wrinkle lines here to give him a serious look. And here I'm going to make him a little bit older with these lines along his nose. The more face wrinkle lines you put, the older he's going to look. Okay. All right, so we're not too bad. We can start indicating uh, little elements like the forehead bone structure here on both sides. And why not indicate the cheekbone on the left here and on the right. Okay, let's go down into the chin. So I'm going si a little bit sideways. I'm not going straight down. I, uh, I have to respect the structure of the face. Using a little angle inwards to go down to the level of the mouth and then turn into the chin. I'm gonna make my chin a little bit bigger here. This is where the chin is going to be. Of course, all these construction lines don't have to be respected perfectly. They're just here to help out with the placement of the futures of the face. But we can always cheat and push the drawing here and there, depending on which face we want to draw. 
So now I can start drawing the ears, which length is the same as the height as the length between the eyebrows and the nose, which is good because I have those construction lines indicated. And all I have to do is just draw the shape of the ear, which you just have to get used to drawing and practice drawing different kind of shape of ears. The structure inside can be quite complex, so try and figure out how to draw it with a couple of lines and just use the same technique all the time and that will do the trick. Here is the hair line if you're not suffering from hair loss. So from here I could start drawing a few lines representing the hair. I'm going to do some long hair, maybe a bit windy in the wind coming from the left. Uh, let me see. Let me center my drawing a little bit better here. There you go. Let's start over with this uh, hair. Okay. So I'm going to do something medium long, short and longer. Always work by three is a good way to go in terms of design. And I'm going to add some lines indicating the hair on the other side, respecting this kind of movements all around the head. To give volume to the hair, I'm going to keep a distance from the line of the structure of the head. Okay, try to do some uh, little variations to make it interesting. Oops, that's not good. There you go. And breaking up a little bit the line here, trying to find a silhouette shape, a bit more interesting. And let's not forget the, the good old neck, going pretty vertically down, and uh, that's fine. And add a few lines to indicate the muscle of the neck, going from the back of the ear to the front of the neck, where the clavicles meet. Okay, so I'm good for the front view, and now I'm going to do a side view. So I'm going to put my drawing over here, like this, and I'm going to use my construction lines, and I'm going to start off uh, by getting the length of the, the diameter, diameter of the circle here. Just the height, using these two lines, I'm going to draw a circle in between, and I'm going to draw another circle inside, a little bit smaller, which is pretty much the side of the head that we cut off at the beginning of the front view. This little circle I'm going to divide in four sections, which is going to be useful to place the ear. And as you can see, I can match my lines to the front view for the eyebrows, the base of the nose and the chin line, and even the hairline, which will be here. These length, these height should be the same, one, two, three, just like on the front view. Should be roughly the same. All this can change depending on the face you are drawing, of course. Now let's do a simple line to get the overall shape of the face on this profile view, going up into the chin and the, sec the base of the ear. And I'm gonna start off with the eyebrow right here. Wonderful. Always using my construction lines. Here's the side view of that triangle, which is the transition from the forehead to the nose. So it goes in and out for the nose and back in to the base of the nose. Let's not forget the nostril right here. Okay. Looking all right. Let's continue our little drawing down to the mouth. I know the lower lip is right there. So I'm going to do the upper lip right here, do the center line and and connect with the lower lip, which is always a little bit 
backwards from the upper lip. And now I'm going down into the chin. And up to the jaw to connect the lower section of the ear. Now let's do the eye first. I can use a vertical line along the nostril to find the left placement of the eye. The eye is a little bit on an angle here, so I'm going to put a construction line to help me. Okay and do the upper lid and indicate the lower lid of the eye. And placing the iris here. Uh, right like that, it's a little bit better. I can do now the ear, which is in a little angle too, like the eye has an angle. The ear too is placed on a bit of an angle. And then I reproduce my drawing of the ear. It's a bit larger because it's a profile view using the same kind of line structure as the front view. I'm going to make the forehead a little more flat and connect the chin to the neck right here. The neck that goes a little bit forward on the front, on a, on a side view. Okay, so the head here. Try and get a bit more angular lines here. That corner of the back head is a bit high, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to do the hair on top. And an indicate, I'm going to indicate the muscle, the neck muscle right there. Add some lines here and there. In the upper lip here, indicate the upper lip. Maybe some cheekbone lines right here and around the eye for the forehead all right i think we should add some hair to this guy so let's try and do a little bit like the front view we're going to do a medium one here small one right next to it and going around the head the hair has a little bit of a volume so you want to draw the line of the hair a bit far from the line of the head. Unless of course if he has really short short hair. Here I'm just trying to reproduce the same movements as the front view. Beautiful! And here we go, so it's looking not too bad. I can add the maybe a little detail, um, yeah, a little bit detail of the lower lid of the eye. Up right here, two lines, and we're good. So this is uh, not too bad, so here's a front view and a profile view. I hope you enjoyed it, see you in the next video. And cut!